feel like the gaming community just got served a cold hard fact when it comes to engaging with live service games. Because the original Warzone is shutting down not even a year after the launch of Warzone 2. Just add this one to the list of recent L's Call of Duty has been handing themselves. So anyone who has kept up with the news about the original Warzone know that the development had its ups and downs for sure, mainly because the original Warzone was pushed far beyond its original intention. So in this video we're going to dive into what's going on with the old Warzone, what's the future of Warzone, and what's the lesson we can take as a gaming community about these live service games. If you guys like these informative videos, please make sure to tap like as it is the best way to support the video and channel within that all famous YouTube algorithm. And are you part of that 64% of people who like to stay up to date with the gaming bar not subscribed to the channel? Well, you know what to do then. Alright, enough YouTube shilling, let's get right into those details. So Call of Duty recently posted this blog saying an update on Call of Duty Warzone Caldera aka just original Warzone 1. Saying as of September 21st 2023 Call of Duty Warzone Caldera will shut down as our team focuses on future Call of Duty content including the current Warzone free to play experience. Obviously hearing that news it kind of hits hard for a lot of Call of Duty fans as Warzone is still looked upon many people within the current Call of Duty community as the better version version of Warzone's BR mode, even though most people are playing Warzone 2, so I think it kind of tells you what really is going on. Because if Warzone 2 literally was worse than Warzone 1, well then people would just be playing Warzone 1. Trust me, I know this from as a Halo fan perspective that a lot of people weren't fans of Halo 5, not fans of Halo Infinite, go back to play Halo MCC because the older games are just better to them. But that's a whole nother psychological experiment video to talk about if we want to dive into it. And ever since Warzone 2 was announced, I kind of figured that Warzone 1 would eventually go away, but not this soon. It's been less than a year since Warzone 2 was released and now you're shutting down Warzone 1. At the time of shutting down Warzone 1 servers, it didn't even make it an entire year after Warzone 2's launch. I'm sure many of you Call of Duty fans probably noticed this as well with season 4 of Modern Warfare 2, you noticed that Warzone 2 dropped the 2 within its name and just became Warzone and then literally just a few weeks later the announcement of Warzone 1 shutting down. The first assumption of this is like well they want to consolidate the player base so everyone just plays the new version of the game which is also very true. Another aspect that plays into this is more on the development side of things of Warzone 1 where that first Warzone was pushed far beyond its original intention. It was meant to be just part of like Modern Warfare 2019 as a battle royale mode but then it became so successful Activision's like hey can we do the next Call of Duty within Warzone? And then developers go, I guess. Back in February of 2022, this Charlie Intel article who are very much into the Call of Duty scene says that Warzone dev admits the game is broken. Infinity Ward's Pat Kelly stated that Warzone was originally built solely as an addition to 2019's Modern Warfare, but after its incredible success, they wanted to incorporate it into future Call of Duty titles. Quoted saying that this caused significant development challenges as it left the game feeling bloated with the additional Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard left Warzone in a weird state quoted by Kelly again saying it didn't feel like Modern Warfare anymore nor did it feel like Black Ops it just kind of felt like its own amalgamation of weird Call of Duty stuff and that's what brings in Warzone 2 as it essentially was meant to be a way to fundamentally be able to bring in future elements of other Call of Duty games or just be like its own kind of entity within Call of Duty rather than being like this hodgepodge kind of awkward patch where of things. So from a development standpoint, it sounds like Warzone 2 is a far superior product compared to Warzone 1, which it was just kind of like with Warzone 1, just kind of thrown together and just and it kind of worked really, where Warzone 2 is more like an intended feature. Obviously there's community sentiment online talking about how the gameplay and movement, especially from Warzone 1, was far superior than Warzone 2. I mean, from my personal experience, I like Warzone 2 a little bit more, but I'm also a Call of Duty boomer, so that also plays a factor of how I enjoy the game. So the reason to switch over full time to Warzone 2 makes sense, but then it does leave a really big question about all the purchase content within Warzone 1 that was heavily pushed and a lot of people bought into it. Well, Call of Duty did address this, saying regarding purchase content in Warzone Caldera, or just Warzone 1 really is what he's re they're really saying there, from Modern Warfare 2019, Black Ops Cold War, or Vanguard that will continue to be accessible in those games. Because all Caldera gameplay 
Player progression, inventories, and online services will expire on the 21st of September. So if you're already bought into those Call of Duty games, you can always go back and use those bits of customization. Though going back to an older Call of Duty game, it's just kind of doing it for just nostalgia's sake rather than actually enjoying and continuing to play the game. But for those free to play players, they're basically screwed over. Like imagine if you're a free to play player who bought a lot of macro transactions and don't like the way Modern Warfare 2 did Warzone and you like to stick with Warzone 1, well, you're basically completely out of luck. Though, let's be real, when it comes to buying microtransactions within Call of Duty games, you're really only buying it for just like that temporary like three month period that you really like to use that item. Because you always wanna just like have the cool new stuff. But you still spent money and you purchased it and now you can't use it anymore if you're a free to play player. I think this is just kind of have to be like a hard lesson learned when it comes to Call of Duty microtransactions that you can't really expect that stuff to roll over until the next version. These microtransactions within Call of Duty have been heavily pushed through years and years and they're only ever relevant for that year of that game. Because you have a whole nother Call of Duty coming up the next year and you're probably gonna wanna play that one instead for the most part. You'll buy into those microtransactions, enjoy them for a while and then you'll just drop the old game and go right into the new game and the cycle continues. That's why personally I've avoided buying any kind of major bundles or really spending money when it comes to microtransactions within Call of Duty. I've bought into the season passes for Modern Warfare 2 just because I know I'm going to be playing the game enough that I'm like why not it's like ten dollars I'll just throw it at the screen I'll get some cool customization and call it a day. But I'm certainly not going to be dropping 30 plus dollars when it comes to a bundle within Call of Duty because, well, it's only gonna be relevant really for that game. And after that, it's just gonna be kind of sitting back being wasted money, not really utilized. But the big problem about going back to these older Call of Duty games is that they are mostly completely scuffed. Because if you don't know right now within Call of Duty, especially in the older games, that they are completely hacked and basically unplayable and actually a security risk to your gaming setup. Just back in June 7th, so really recent stuff saying Call of Duty hackers have reportedly perma-banned your account with just a few clicks. And from previous experience of being a Call of Duty player since Modern Warfare 2, the original one, that Activision is not gonna do anything when it comes to supporting these older Call of Duty games because that's not where the money is at. Remember Call of Duty 4 was just completely unplayable for how hacked these lobbies became. People like flying around the map as a personal AC-130 the entire time. There were even hacks back in the original Modern Warfare 2 where people would hack into a server and make everyone like a 10th prestige and then sometimes your account would get banned because of weird progression red flag issues that would come up from the game. One of the more recent Call of Duties, Cold War, has been having hacking issues and it's definitely not a safe or fun experience to jump in to play that game. So while Call of Duty says like, no, no, you can still play the old games and enjoy that content that you purchased, but at your own risk of your computer getting completely hacked. And I don't know, just because like, I just don't want to have that issue whatsoever, I'll just play something else. This just continually seems to be L's that Call of Duty has been handing themselves, especially over the recent shutdowns that they've had with some of the fan projects of SM2 and also the X Labs mods that people have been able just to jump in and create some fun content for Call of Duty players to jump in and play. Like, it's never gonna be anything serious. Like, it's definitely not gonna compete with actual Call of Duty. Yet, yeah, Activision Blizzard are being very forceful of shutting these things down, like sending cease and desist orders. So was the shutdown of Warzone 1 a surprise? Well, not really. The only surprise to me is how soon they actually happened. And like I said, I feel like this shutdown is gonna be a good example of how players should interact with live service games, especially games that are basically online multiplayer experiences like Warzone, where if that player place goes down or if that company finds that product not financially viable anymore and they shut it down, well then you'll lose all your progression, you'll lose all your microtransactions and just kind of go, what did I have to show for it? Though with these live service games, they put so much emphasis on the month to month experience that you don't ever really think it beyond like the long term of like, how is this game gonna play out in one year, two years, three years? So basically what I'm saying is be more financially responsible, I guess, when it comes to spending money on these live service games because you truly don't own the stuff that you're buying into. You're kind of just leasing it and being able to use it within the game. Let's have a moment of silence for Warzone 1. You got us through the pandemic, but now we have to let you go. Excellent service, sir.